Welcome to worship with us today. The Lord be with you all and also with you. Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth where, with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 11. It was the Lord who made it known, made known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The psalm for today is Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name. O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. The next reading is from James, chapter 3, 13 through chapter 4, 3, 7, and 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, and selfish ambition in your hearts. Do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is it is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder and you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Mark. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, Who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hello!
is a simple way to greet others. And lately, it feels like the only way that we can connect with others through masked faces with at least six feet of separation. My husband, Scott, and our son, Andrew, would like to remind us of some ways that we might have greeted each other before the pandemic. Shaking hands was very traditional in our society. <laughs> The fist bump was popular a few years ago. The fist bump explosion was, a, was popular also. And various other versions such as the turkey. Gobble, 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 gobble. A hug was very much a part of many families and friends greetings. Now during the pandemic we are left with the elbow tap, air hug, he signs from a great distance. Thank you both very much. At church, the worship leader says, the peace of the Lord be with you. And we respond with, and also with you. What does that exchange mean to you? Is it simply a friendly greeting? Is it like saying good morning to the neighbors and friends, or is there another meaning? We seem to use the passing of the peace as a way to check in with our friends in the congregation, but is that the purpose of the passing of peace? The passing of the peace is a way of reconciling with someone you might have had an issue with during the week. It is also a way of reconciling ourselves with God. Our worship books place the passing of the peace at the midpoint just before communion. Many see it as a way to prepare for communion, seeking to make ourselves right with God and others. In our second reading today, in the book of James, it states, And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. So... How do we make peace? Often, it takes just one person to start a heartfelt apology or a statement of truth that there has been a misunderstanding. There have been many times when there are two or more of us in a conversation and we all hear something different and it causes many hurts. The passing of the peace is a way to clear the air and prepare to commune with God and with our faith family. I heard of a man who would not participate in communion until a lawsuit that he was a party to was settled. He did not believe that he could come to the rail as a reconciled person because of that suit. It lasted for about a year. He believes strongly in the importance of coming to the rail as a reconciled person. Our lives are so different from the lives that people around Jesus' time, or even the lives of our parents and grandparents. How many of us are related to any of our neighbors? It used to be that families lived very close together seems today that many families are moving closer to relatives as they near retirement, but for many years they have lived far apart. How many of us have even been in our neighbors' homes? I know on my block we say hello and we share news of our lives, but generally we are not in each other's homes. We don't know our neighbors the way that people knew each other back then. During Jesus' time, people knew their neighbors very well because many of them were relatives. I think about even my parents when my parents were growing up. They were surrounded by family. My parents had aunts and uncles and cousins within their communities. During my growing up years, we moved to many different towns and were never in a town where another part of our family lived. You can imagine living in a close-knit close community, you might get on one another's nerves. 
In order for a community to survive or even thrive, there must be a way for people to be reconciled to one another. Today, the people we are closest to are those who belong to the same organizations that we belong to, like church, Elks Club, Gardening Club, any group where we share a common interest. We meet, and then we each go on to our separate homes and often don't see each other for at least a week or longer. We use the passing of the peace to check in on our friends and neighbors. In some churches, it takes quite a while to finish with the passing of the peace because everyone is so anxious to greet each other. Is there anyone who you avoid in the passing of the peace? If so, that is the person that you should be greeting above all. The passing of the peace is a time to reconcile ourselves with God and with one another. Maybe there is something that only you and God know that you feel that you need to be reconciled about. In this time of, of separation, anxiety, and fear, how can we take this passing of the peace out into the world in our daily lives. How about when you're frustrated with a person in front of you at the checkout outline saying silently, peace be with you to that person. Or the person in their car who appears not to have any idea where they're headed. Maybe that's the time for you to say, peace be with you to that driver. Or there's a relative of yours who does not share your views. Say to them aloud or silently, peace be with you. May the Lord's peace be with you all. Amen. God has made us new people through our baptism into Christ and our response of faith. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for this hurt, hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of cooperation, we pray for the nations of the world embroiled in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them to find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness to the Tickle family, Gilchrist family, Donna, Nancy, Custer family, Thibodeau family, 
Dwayne, Hilly family, Gansler family, Krista, and Dana. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst as they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today, especially the Zimmermans and the Hilly families. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We lift our voices, our hands, our lives up to our Lord. In response to the generous gifts God shares with us each week, we share our gifts for ministry in our offering. To continue with our offering, checks may be mailed to the church office. You can also give electronically. We give thanks for the gifts God shares with us. We give thanks for the abundant life God brings us. And we give thanks for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the Lord's table. You do not need to be a member of our church or our denomination to commune with us. At home, we invite you during this time to feel the Spirit's presence and join the entire body of Christ together. You may use bread and wine or juice or water. You may choose to fast from communion today and hear this blessing. 
You belong to God. You are love. You are not alone. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.